Hello and welcome to the Daily Royal. My name is Shelby and I have been a royal watcher for the past 10 years. In this podcast, I talk about the daily events of seven of the European monarchies. So I talk about Belgium, the UK, Denmark, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. I upload Monday through Friday with occasional bonus episodes here and there. Today, we are going to be talking about all of the events from Monday, May 17th of 2021. So this episode is everything. It is the events that we are talking about every day. Um, Every country had something except, I mean, the Netherlands had a lot, but that's going to be like a whole separate episode. So um, we're going to cover every single event from all the royal families except for... Um, the Dutch royal family. Wow, my brain already stopped working. Um, but then we are also going to have an additional episode, and I don't know which is going to be up first. (laughs) Probably Queen Maxima's birthday event episode is already up. Um, I'll get that one out earlier. Well, it's technically still her birthday here in the States. Um... And then we'll put this one up like I normally do. So, this is the first one I'm recording, though. So today, we are going to start with the Belgian royal family. So let's go do that now. Belgium, there weren't a ton of events to actually talk about, Um, but there's one that I want to draw some attention to because I think it's really important. Um, So we're going to still talk about the events. So today, it's Monday, King Philippe, the Prime Minister of Belgium, Alexander de Croix, had their weekly audience. Okay, happens every week, talk about it every week. I'm pretty sure this is what I say every week now. Um, but then additionally to that, um, sorry, let me pull up my outline so I get the day, the actual words correct. Um, I probably should have brought up my outline earlier, but whatever. It's totally fine. Oh, jeez. Okay. So many tech problems. Okay. My iPad still thinks it lives in Norway. It does not live in Norway. Thank you to my VPN. It's made my day magical in that everything worked all the time. Um, Okay, so I'm pulling up my outline on my phone because hopefully that's easier. Yeah, okay. So this is the thing that I wanted to draw some attention to. Um... So today, the Belgian royal household shared a social media post um, where they talked about their solidarity on today, which is the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia. Um, So part of why I wanted to address this is in my knowledge, and I don't have a ton of it, but to my knowledge, this is the first time the Belgian royal family has, like, explicitly said something in support of the LGBTQ plus community. Not that it's the first time it's ever happened, to my knowledge, but it's definitely the first time I have a recollection of it. Um, and I haven't followed them that closely, though, until the past two years. So, take that with a huge grain of salt. But to my knowledge, this is the first time they've said something. Um, so that's why I wanted to draw attention to it. And I did research, like, I tried to find out if they had said something before, and I couldn't find anything. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It just means I'm not the best at finding sources. 
Um, so those were the two things happening in Belgium. Of course, I wanted to just draw attention to the importance of any monarchy coming out in support, pun intended, of LGBTQ rights. Um, because that's super important. So that is what was going on in Belgium. And now we are going to jump to the UK. The UK today is interesting because the things that I'm going to talk about are not actually events. Um, and that's okay. This happens a lot, especially with the British royal family, because they have a lot of personal initiatives that are being announced on kind of a rolling basis. So that's really what today is. Um, so today, the first official anything to do with the Platinum Jubilee has been announced other than like the Jubilee is going to exist and that there's going to be events. Um, So for the next year, citizens of the UK are going to be encouraged to plant trees across the UK um, in what is an initiative called the Queen's Green Canopy. So this is a really cool way to sustainably honor 70 years on the throne for Queen Elizabeth. Um, Obviously, that's a huge deal. It is the first time the UK is ever going to see that. Um, And the last for a very long time, Um, probably ever in all actuality. Um, But... I think this is like a really cool way to kind of keep it alive for the whole year Um, because it's coming up in, oh gosh, um, just about a year, a year and a couple weeks. Um, Yes, I know the dates. For those who don't know, I am planning on going to the UK next year for this Jubilee events. Um, I'm in constant process. Um, the first big step has been taken, which is me getting my passport. Um, still waiting on it, but there should be no issue. Um, so that's, it's like the first weekend in June. Um, and there will be a ton of events theoretically happening. We'll see what the COVID world is like in a year. Um, but this is the first thing to kind of keep it, keep momentum, but also, um, be very COVID safe and environmentally friendly while doing so. So that's a huge deal. Um, and then also today there was a video, a new video released, um, in the Duchess of Cambridge's conversations about the photos in the hold still, um, collection with the National Portrait Gallery. So today she talked to a young woman who took this photo and it's called Forever Holding Hands. And it is about, it is a photo of two elderly hands. So it's a couple, it's a husband and a wife, um, who both got sick and died of COVID. Um, and so they went through the story. It's really lovely and just sweet. Um, and also mildly heartbreaking, um, because, you know, it's a fairly It's just such a sad thing. Um, So I will have it linked on the website. It's really lovely. Please listen. Um, Yeah, it's just wonderful. Okay, so those were the, like, publicized things. They aren't even really events. 
Um, but let's take a look at the court circular now for today. Um, oh, this is interesting. Um, okay, so in Clarence House, the Prince of Wales this evening held a meeting with representatives from Myanmar non-governmental organizations. I'm going to talk about this very brief briefly. There is a coup going on in Myanmar, also known as Burma, um, where I think it was in February, the leader of Myanmar was, I believe she was arrested. I'm also not sure if she's entirely the leader anymore, but she was for a while. Um, but she was arrested and mil military forces have basically taken in control again of Myanmar. This is a cycle in Myanmar. Um, so they were under a military leadership for a very long time um, and then reached democracy. And then there were some problems um, with diplomacy. That's what I'm going to leave it at. Um, and so the support kind of dwindled and now Myanmar is undergoing another coup. It's awful. It's just very sad, very unfortunate. Um, and so, obviously, NGOs are playing a huge part in that, um, in supporting political activists who are speaking out against the regime um, and about what's happening. And because there is a dumpster fire of problems in the world, this isn't getting enough attention because there's not enough attention to go around. Um, you know, we have Israel and Palestine trying to kill each other every night. It's a disaster in the world of foreign policy. And like, this is so low on the priority list. I don't know why, but I, I do. Um, it's just not great. So anyway, Charles was having conversations to learn about the situation. Okay. Um, so that's what was going on in the UK. Let's go ahead now and talk about the Danish royal family. Today in Denmark, there was just one event, and it's finally something, like, of course this happened today, when there's so many other things happening, um, but this is, like, the first time officially that my two worlds are colliding. Um, so today, Queen Margrethe and Crown Prince Frederick held a meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State, Tony Blinken. So, obviously, I just went on a whole spiel about foreign policy. I kind of love foreign pol policy and the way the U.S. is involved. I'm actually really angry with the U.S. right now. <laughs> What's new? Um, in our foreign policy dealings, but like, whatever. Um, so, like, I love foreign policy. And you all know I have been waiting wholeheartedly for ambassadors to be named and present their credentials to the monarchs I talk about every day. Because um, it's just another way I can nerd out. So, it was very interesting um, because I followed... I have very few accounts that I follow um, on Twitter, but I follow Tony Blinken. I follow the Secretary of State. Um, and he has no mention of this meeting. I'm sure it's on his, like, official calendar, but I didn't look at it. Um, but he is in Denmark, or was. He just landed in Finland. Um, 
but he was in Denmark today. He met with the Prime Minister. He also, of course, met with the Queen and Crown Prince, why I'm talking about it. Um, but then he also had a meeting with the Foreign Minister, and they were discussing um, pretty much like Arctic Circle support um, and just general like diplomatic things, uh, which is super normal. It's weird because it hasn't super happened yet, um, just because pandemic. And even though he's been in his job for four months, um, he hasn't, he's done a few of these, but not a lot, um, given not his actual predecessor, but like a legitimate functional secretary of state will typically be traveling three weeks out of the month. Um, and he just hasn't done that yet. He will. It'll come. I'm sure he's vaccinated. The world is getting vaccinated. Everything's fine. But this was the first time and it was very exciting, um, for me as like a foreign policy junkie and also doing what I do every day. So, so glad to see that. Um, there really isn't much to share. Like it's a meet and greet. These happen. Um, I'm sure there were, like, official passing on of greetings and just, like, a general conversation about the status of the world. Um, but because Margaretha and Frederick don't have governing powers, um, you know, it's really just, like, a meet and greet. Um, so that is what was happening in Denmark. We are skipping the Netherlands. Addendum. There's a whole nother episode, like, we're not skipping them. There's just, they get their own episode today. Um, AKA Maxima gets her own episode today. Who would have ever thought we'd see that day? Um, but please go listen to that too. So moving on to Norway. <laughs> Norway is where we are going to spend the bulk of our episode today. Well, yeah, that's true. So today was Constitution Day in Norway. This basically serves as like their national day. Um, so last year, you'll remember I did like a whole um, Norway's Always First. So I played their whole national anthem in the episode. I'm choosing not to do that this year. I hope I remember for the national days that are coming ahead. Um, I just decided that wasn't how I wanted to use time in the episode. And I'd rather spend more time talking about the events. So the way I'm going to do this is focus on events in the order in which they happened. So typically I talk about events in order of precedence, like King Harald, Queen Sonia, Crown Prince Akun, Crown Princess Mantamarit. Like I do that in that order um, because that is the right way to do this normally. But um, national days are different, um, especially Norway, because there are kind of two separate functional things and then it all combines into the same day. So I do it, I'm going to do it in order of time um, just to share that a little bit better. So we are going to start off. So I'm not sure actually if this was recorded this year or previously. Um, but there was a special on the Norwegian station that I was choosing to watch events for National Day on. Um, that was Queen Sonia giving like information about 
um, Palace Square or Slotsbrocken, I think, but it's Castle or Palace Square. Um, so it's the area, it's a park in front of the Royal Palace um, that has a lot of different things. So there were sculptures and she was just talking about it. Um, I speak no Norwegian. Um, I just started learning Dutch and Swedish um, now that I feel like I have a decent handle on my Spanish. Um, but like I've learned apple and water and man, girl, boy, woman. Like I haven't learned real words yet. So I have no idea. Um, and I also couldn't tell if it was filmed this year or not. There was definitely some social distancing. So maybe it was filmed last year. Who knows? Um, and then came the like official day of events. So the first thing is the Crown Prince. So Crown Prince Akun and his family, Crown Princess Matamarit, Princess Ingrid Alexandra, and Prince Fear Magnus, um, always start National Day by receiving like local children um, at the entrance to their home, to their residence, which is called Skagum. Um, or Skagum? I don't know. Um, this is weird. Sorry, I'm opening the wrong things. Okay. Um, so they did that this year. I should mention the weather today was absolute crap. It rained all day in Norway. All day. Um, so they come out, they bring their dogs. I think they, I think they're Labradoodles or they're some kind of doodle. They're adorable. Um, and they just greet and talk to everyone. <laughs> There's, I think like the mayor of, um, Asker, which is the, I think it's a district in Oslo, but it may not be. It may be its own municipality. Um, it must be because they have a mayor. Um, we'll give like a, a little speech. So it's their, their celebration in their local community. Um, because the way Norway celebrates constitution day is very communal. Um, they have, it's similar to like the, our independence day or our national day, um, where there are parades typically, um, and just different events held throughout on different cities. Um, so like where I live, we do, um, we do a, 4th of July, like, race, like a 5K, and then we have a community parade, and then we have community fireworks, um, and it's all on the 4th, so it's, it's similar, um, so that, that's cool, um, so that was the first part, and then the Crown Prince family visited a couple of different locations in Asker, um, so including a residential care facility, a school, um, and I think another, like, maybe assisted living, um, residential facility. And this was just, you know, a way to support the local community, celebrate National Day and Constitution Day with them, um, and just be a part of that. Um, and then they make their way to Oslo. So then this is where our like factions collide. So King Harald and Queen Sonia and the Crown Prince family all gather on the balcony of the Royal Palace. There is, um, I don't really want to call it like a musical performance, but like a military band, local schools. So it's all music based. Um, but there was like a rifle regiment who was doing, um, like rifle shows, uh, rifle, um, marching. And, um, there were like different age groups of choirs and they all 
take part in different th musical performances, um, including like the national anthem um, or the I, and the king song, which, by the way, is God Save the King, just in Norwegian, um, which is kind of cool. But so that's kind of where everything collides. So the whole royal family comes out, they gather, um, and they wave. So typically there are like thousands of people who come to the slots block in to see the royal family. I think this year there were maybe less than 500, which is fine. We're in the middle of a pandemic. They were encouraged not to show. Um, and it was pouring rain. So... I wouldn't show either. I love them. And if I go for Constitution Day, which someday I will, I will handle it because of the rain because I'm a foreigner. But, like, if I were a Norwegian, I would not go to the rain. <laughs> um, so that is kind of, like, where our, pa our parties combine. But then they separate again. So this is a little abnormal in terms of, like, this is pandemic life, right? So King Harald and Queen Sonia go in one car and they, like, quote-unquote parade through the city. Typically, again, this is, like, a mass of people watching the parade, greeting them, spending time with their monarchs. This time they, like, had a select few places where people were aware that they were coming and so they could stand outside and wave. And, and they're also supposed to do this in an open car. It's pouring down rain. It was in a closed car. I'm not even sure Harold and Sonia rolled, out, rolled down their windows. It's fine. It's a pandemic. It's pouring down rain. Like, I get it. So then, also in a different car, Crown Prince Akun and Crown Princess Metmarit, they know... They no longer have their children. Um, I'm sure that their children want to spend time with their friends because, again, that's what happens on National Day. Like, you spend time with your friends. You get to go do things. It's really fun. They wanted to be done. <laughs> They've been working all morning. They wanted to be done. That's an assumption, not a guarantee. Um, so then they also went to different, like, spots throughout the dish, throughout Oslo. And then there must have been a period of time. I'm not sure when. Um, but at some point, they all boarded the royal yacht. Um, and they took part in a, like, a boat parade, um, which is really just a gathering of boats. And they're making their way through the Oslo Fjord. <clears throat> which, by the way, is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Like... That alone would have been enough to sell me on Norway. I'm already pretty sold on going at some point, but, like, it keeps making its way higher and higher up the priority list. <laughs> um, like, it's now number two or three. Well, I guess it's three. Because the UK is first, Spain is second, and then Norway. Um, just so you all know. So that was really cool, and so that was really where, like... The royal family but also the family of the king like all came together and they had a little celebration on the boat um which is great because it allows them to be socially distant but together because the royal yacht is huge like it's so large um so that was national day i know we spent a lot of time on that but i wanted to really go through like each of the events kind of give some context hopefully next year is normal um, I found just in like my watching of events today, I found 2019 celebrations to watch and I may actually watch a few of them because I'm really curious as to what this is normally like. So that was 17 May in Norway. Um, it was wonderful. I hate that the weather was crap, but that's okay. Um, Okay, so with that, we are going to move on and talk about our last two countries. So let's go to Spain first.
there was just one event today in Spain, which is totally fine because we're coming up to the time that I would like to end this podcast. So today, uh, King Felipe and Queen Letizia presided and delivered the 2020 National Research Awards in Science. Um, this is an annual thing. I kind of thought we had already done this this year, but apparently we didn't, or maybe we did 2019s and early 2021 because pandemic, but I really thought we had already done this one this year. Um, but there are a series of events in Spain that like each ministry takes, um, and has awards every year. So there's like a science and innovation, or an innovation and design, these research awards, there's fashion awards, um, like industry awards. These happen every year. Um, sports awards, just so many. Um, and so I, they run together, and I'm not, <laughs> never entirely sure which ones we've done. Um, but I really thought we had already done the research awards. I don't know. I'll have to look back and determine which awards that I'm thinking about because that's where we're at in life now. Um, so that was the event today. Their calendar is kind of, it's normal, but like kind of weird this week. Um, there's a really big event. I think it's on Wednesday. Um, that typically is held in the early, like February time. Um, but because this is a preview, it's focused on tourism and I'm really not sure what it's going to look like this year, which is crazy. I like, Spain should not be relying on tourism for their rebuild right now. They, it ju they just shouldn't. Um, anyway, we'll talk more and more about that on Wednesday when they go to the fair. Um, but I am really excited about it. Anyway. Okay. So that was really the only event there. Um, and now we are going to go ahead and talk about the Swedish royal family. There were four events today in Sweden. Four. Do you want to know how many I've, of them I can talk about? Two. I know you all heard that, but like, just so I can reiterate, that was the deepest sigh. It's so frustrating. I've been through this, but like I'm having a hard time with the Swedish royal family and their website updating situation and what they choose to share about and what they don't. It drives me crazy. And I've just decided, like, if they don't share about it that day, I'm not talking about it because it's too much. It's too much to keep track of. Like, if I know an event happened and they don't share about it for days, like, what do you want me to do? I, I can't talk about it four days later. The whole point of this podcast is that it's the daily events. No one else is this slow. Okay? Great. Okay, so here are the things that happened. Um, so today, King Carl Gustav took part in a digital meeting at the Academy of Gastronomy. All I know. It's all they shared. Um, then, King Carl Gustav, Crown Princess Victoria, and Prince Daniel took part in digital meeting in a digital meeting with the different um, employee unions throughout Sweden, where they focused on the effects of the pandemic on Swedish employees in different industries. Um, again, this is what I know, and this is the one I can expound upon. Um, and then also today, Queen Sylvia took part in a digital board meeting with the Sylvia, Sylvia Home Foundation, which is um, Alzheimer's and dementia care support is what they primarily provide and they have different residential facilities called Sylvia Home or Sylvia Helmets, which are Sylvia Homes, um, 
to focus on those issues. And then finally, Crown Princess Victoria participated in a working meeting with Seabos, um, which is the seafood business ocean something. <laughs> the S does not mean something. Um, but it's focused on sea food business industry um, working together to create a good blue ocean um, and like sustainably practicing their trade. Um, so they're having this working like conference for the next few days. I expect Victoria to be kind of part of it every day. Today she opened it, gave a brief speech about the importance of the work that CBOSS is doing um, and recognizing their hard work that they have already done. So that was the day. Um, please go check out all the things, thedailyroyal.com, the Daily Royal on Instagram. Um, I posted quite a few new things on Instagram today, like throughout the day, um, that I'm really excited about. And if they get, um, if they have a good response, I will continue to do them. I really enjoy doing them, so I may continue doing them anyway. Um, but I would like for them to be something everyone enjoys. So if you like them, like them. Like, literally give them a heart on Instagram. Um, so I know. So, that is it for this episode. I personally am going to go take a voice rest. Um, and then come back and record the Queen Maxima birthday special. Um, and I will talk to you all then but also tomorrow. Um, but until then, have a great Tuesday. Talk to you later. Bye.